So I have a few hadiths that I hope actually can transform the way that we look at life. And subhanAllah, that's always been one of my favorite things about the Prophet wasallam is the way the Prophet wasallam was able to handle both adversity and prosperity with grace. And that's something that takes a lot. You know, a great football player, a great athlete is someone that has the mental strength to be able to see through those difficult moments in the game that doesn't give up and cave in when things appear to be most difficult. And that's what allows you to be a great athlete. And subhanAllah, when we talk about life, you literally have to be prepared for anything that life is going to throw your way, whether it's going to be a form of ease or a form of hardship. Brother Tariq was talking about the Prophet ﷺ in Ta'if. It takes a lot to be able to recover from something like that. What impresses me about the Prophet ﷺ is not just the grace he showed in the moment of Ta'if, it's the fact that his resolve was not in any way affected by what happened to him on the worst day of his life. We don't see the Prophet ﷺ taking a break from the da'wah. He didn't you know, take six months off to to regage himself so that he could be able to handle the rejection once again. He was right back at it. And that's the sign of greatness. And the Prophet ﷺ, who was the most amazing in that sense, said that that state is the amazing state of the believer, the amazing mindset of the believer. And so there's this famous narration where Suhaib anhu says that we were sitting with the Prophet ﷺ and then suddenly, the Prophet wasallam he started to laugh. And we said to the Messenger wasallam why are you laughing? And the Prophet wasallam says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ How amazing is it to be a believer? How amazing is the affair of the believer? إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ Everything about him is good. Everything that happens to him, all of his affairs are khair. There is good in them. And he says, وَلَيْسَ ذَاكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِمُؤْمِنٍ He says, no one has that except for a believer. The mindset that he's going to describe only belongs to a person that really, really believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءَ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ When good things happen to him, when, when moments of ease and happiness come to him, he's grateful and that's better for him. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ The Prophet sallallahu says, and when he's struck by something Harsh, when he's struck by a difficult situation. Sabr, he's patient. وَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And that's better for him. And he says, no one is able to face both difficulty and ease with that grace like a believer is. The believer is always in the zone, no matter what his circumstances are around him. And subhanAllah, we get so caught up in this life trying to control the results that we forget to control what's actually in our control which is the process. Allah gave you the effort. Allah gave you the control over your intention. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not charge you or punish you for the result of an action. Allah charges you for your intention. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Your deeds are but by your intention. Because that's in your control. When you approach life recognizing that the results of what happened are not in my control, but the process is fully mine, I own the process altogether, then you're able to handle whatever is going to be thrown at you. And subhanAllah, especially when you're, when you're, just going, when you're embarking on trying to figure out what you're going to do for the rest of your life, what your career is going to be, what your education is going to be, who your husband or wife is going to be, all that stuff that starts to come in, all that decision making, then that's when you really need to internalize this entire concept of having that mindset of a believer. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was once sitting and some of the poor companions kept coming to him and asking him for money over and over and over again. And he kept on giving him money. I mean, they were, they were poor, they needed it. And he had that control ﷺ where he could readily direct charity their way. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he sits them down one day and he says, listen, مَا يَكُونُ عِنْدِي مِنْ خَيْرٍ There is no good that I'm hiding from you. فَلَنْ أَدَّخِرَهُ عَنْكُمْ If I have good, if I have money, if I have anything to give you, I'm going to give it to you. You need to know that I'm not going to hold back anything from you. When you come to me and ask me for anything, I'll give it to you. But he said to them, وَمَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْ يُعِفَّهُ اللَّهُ Whoever seeks to be 
independent or whoever seeks forbearance and to show compassion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him that. So if you want to be a forbearing person, a compassionate person, Allah is going to give you that. And he says, وَمَنْ يَسْتَعِنْ يُغْنِهِ اللَّهِ He says that whoever seeks help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will help him. If he seeks to be independent, Allah is going to eventually make him independent. So if you're trying to gain an internal quality and learn to be patient with people, Allah is going to eventually unlock that for you. And if you're trying to be independent, you're taking the steps in life to be financially independent, to be successful in the career sense so that you don't have to depend on anybody else, Allah will give you that. And He says, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ And if you're trying to learn how to be patient, patient with the difficulties that come in your life, patient with tragedy and hardship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you patient. He says, وَمَا أُعْطِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً هُوَ خَيْرٌ وَأَوْسَعُ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ This is the key here. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is nothing that Allah will give you that's a greater gift, that's more encompassing, meaning it'll take care of more aspects of your life than patience. And patience is different from the other things because patience is a sense of perspective. Patience comes from a sense of, from a mindset. And the Prophet ﷺ is basically saying, Allah can give you money. And Allah can give you financial independence. And Allah can give you the career that you want. And Allah can give you the person that you want. And Allah can make all those ways out for you. But there is nothing that Allah is going to give you that's greater than patience. If you have the gift of patience, then you will be able to take on anything that comes your way. And that's the way that the believer is. Nothing can faze him. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ how amazing is the affair of the believer? There is nothing you could do to him to make him lose that perspective. Anas ibn Malik anhu says, I had an uncle and he was the brother of my mother, Haram ibn Malhan, the brother of his mother, Umm Sulaim. So it's his, his maternal uncle. And he said that he belonged to this group of 70 Ansar of the Prophet 70 companions in Medina. And these companions, they were known for teaching the people Qur'an during the night. So he says they used to sit in the masjid and they used to teach the people Qur'an and they used to recite it to each other. And they used to contemplate on it and think about it and reflect on it. And this is beautiful. He says during the day, they used to go and collect firewood. And they would sell that firewood and they would give the proceeds in, chair, in charity. And he says that they used to go and they used to collect water and they would fill the pitchers of the poor, of those Ahl al-Sufa, those poor people that were living in the masjid. And they would hand them their pitchers. So literally during the day, they were going out and serving the people. During the night, they were sitting in the masjid teaching the people the Qur'an. And it's a group of about 70 of them. And his uncle is one of them. So these people are the best of the best of that society. And... Anas anhu says, so a group came to the Prophet and they said to the Prophet can you send us back some of these people so that they could teach our tribe about Islam? Can you send us back a group of the 70 and they could go to our people and they could teach them about Islam as well? So the Prophet he let them go. And Haram ibn Milhan was amongst that group. Anas ibn Malik anhu says, while they were walking away from Medina, as soon as they got outside of Medina, they were ambushed by that group and they were killed. And he said, Haram ibn Milhan in particular, he said that a person stabbed him literally in the back. So he stabbed him in the back. And Haram ibn Milhan said, Fustu wa Rabbil Ka'ba. I have succeeded by the Lord of the Ka'ba. I've succeeded. Now here's the thing a hadith like that. I have succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba, even while he was killed. Doesn't that sound like we're looking for death and you know, that's, that's a little too much. You're out there looking for death and you're looking for murder so that you could die shaheed, you could die a martyr. So go out there and throw yourself out there and start, start messing around so that hopefully you'll die and you'll die shaheed. There was once a guy, this is a true story, there was once a guy that jumped out of the window from a hotel in Mecca because he thought it was shahada. All right. That's not the way this works. Haram ibn Milhan was not a person that was looking for death. 
He was not a person waiting around, waiting for the next battle so that he could go to war and he could die a martyr. Haram ibn Milhan was a contributing member to society. A man that was always in the mindset of giving to people, whether spiritually fulfilling them or providing for them with charity. But subhanAllah, look at how he acts when he's, when he's killed. Look at the way that he acts when he's stabbed. He was already in the mindset of seeing success as success in the sight of Allah. This is not a man that pursued death. But the fact of the matter is that the mindset of that person was so strong that even when death came to him, even when his life was taken away from him, he still had that perspective because he was in the zone. While he was serving the people, while he was teaching the people the Qur'an, he was in the zone. And a person that has that mindset, you can't take that away from them even if you kill them. Even if you murdered that person. They still have that mindset. They're still in the zone. They're still tuned in to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for them. Because they see success and failure entirely in the hereafter sense, in the sense of the hereafter. They're not fatalistic. They don't sit around and not work. They don't sit around and not do anything. These are productive people. But there's nothing you could do to take that away from them. SubhanAllah. Last year I was talking about our three winners. Liya, Yusuf and Razan. Look at that mindset. Look at those beautiful people. And look at how those legacies lived on. And look at their families. It continued to live on. Because a believer is in that particular zone, is in that particular mindset. And they see everything as a means of elevation in the hereafter. Whether it's bad that comes to you or whether it's good that comes to you, this is a chance. It's an opportunity. It's a way to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was able to put that in his companions, put that mindset in his companions. You know, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says that when the Prophet ﷺ was dying, he had this really, really, really hot fever, this really severe fever. And he said that, I put my leg next to the leg of the Prophet ﷺ and he was wrapped up. And he said, it literally burned my leg. Feeling the leg of the Prophet ﷺ with his fever literally burned my leg. And Ibn Mas'ud said, I was shocked. How can a human being withstand that much pain? How can a human being withstand a fever to that extent? And the Prophet ﷺ, he saw him shocked and, and just, just taken aback by how, how severe this fever was. And he says to him that we the prophets of God are tested twice as much as any of you. So when we're struck with something, it hurts twice as much. So think of a really severe fever, double it. Whatever it is, any pain, any difficulty that a person has, the Prophet ﷺ said that the prophets get twice of that. So you can imagine how that is. And Ibn Mas'ud who says, I said to the Prophet Sallallahu Is that because you're twice as rewarded? Look at the mindset. Is that because you are twice as rewarded? It wasn't, Ya Rasulullah, why? But you're a good man. This shouldn't be happening to you. Shouldn't the Prophets have it easiest? Shouldn't the Prophets not have to struggle with anything? I mean, they're the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shouldn't they be okay? But the Prophet sallallahu conditioned them to where they saw everything as an opportunity for good deeds. Everything, even in that severity. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is that because you get twice as rewarded? The Prophet sallallahu said, it's because I get twice as rewarded. And he said, the Muslim, any Muslim is not afflicted with any harm, even if it's the prick of a thorn. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheds his sins the way that a leaf would shed its tree. Uh, the way that a tree, not a leaf would shed its tree, that's counterintuitive. The way that a tree would shed its leaves. Think of a tree shedding its leaves. The Prophet said, when any Muslim, this isn't just something for me. When any one of you is struck by anything, Allah is literally taking away your sins, washing away your sins, no matter what the extent of it is. So just because I have double the fever, doesn't mean that Allah belittles that prick of a thorn that you have. Because Allah also knows that the mindset of the Prophet ﷺ is greater than any mindset. And, and, and his iman, his faith, is able to withstand far more than any of us are able to withstand. The idea here is that Allah knows the type of pressure that you can withstand. 
And Allah will not put you under a level of pressure or duress that you can't handle. <laughs> 